my guest today is freelance clarinet and bass clarinetist Deirdre O'Leary. She plays with Cassiopeia Winds, Berlin-based Sargays, and medieval funk with Anachronos. She's also a uh, volunteer with Extinction Rebellion and lives in her self-built house in the Eco Village in Fifth Jordan. <laughs> start off um whereabouts are you at the moment yeah i'm in my extremely tidy as you can see house <laughs> it all looks like, as good as this <laughs> this is one one clear corner <laughs> in club jordan um, uh, in our house that we built um by hand um and i'm here with my um my husband and our two daughters so were you working on a certain project when lockdown happened did you immediately miss out on something or? yeah we were just about to start recording uh, sorry rehearsing um for a tour with my sister and um, katrina o'leary and nick roth and mel mercier and um oh a really nice hurdy-gurdy player whose name i've forgotten yeah so uh, that that that's called anachronos the red book of ossery we recorded it actually it's being released soon anachronos oh, yeah, <laughs> Red Book of Ossery is really good fun. Um, Francesco Teresi was on the recording with us, but he wasn't oh, available. Yeah. yeah, so we were just about to tour that. Um, that's like medieval music um, funked up with like um, all the wrong instruments, bass clarinet and saxophones and yeah, really good fun. That sounds great. Where were yeah, you supposed to be touring? Was that around Ireland or further? Around Ireland. Yeah, just around Ireland. And um, Crash Ensemble, we were supposed to go to Amsterdam. Um, with Stargaze, I was supposed to go to, I think, Rotterdam and Hamburg. Um, and yeah, that's where I would have been today, actually, Hamburg. <laughs> oh, it's, it's strange, isn't yeah. it? It's, yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, are you, from day to day, do you, are you aware of where you should be and what you should be doing? Yeah, do you know, I was, <clears throat> it's weird because all those projects I love, you know, I so love, I love working with those people. I love the music. It's really rewarding. It's really funky stuff. I was, you know, feels really prestigious and everything. And yet when lockdown happened, I was really enjoying putting all these red X's in my diary, you know, going, <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm not going there. And I'm not, and I don't know why, but, but anyway, now it started to hit that I, it's actually, um, it's kind of sad. Yeah. Now I'm noticing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Deirdre, you just mentioned there that you actually built your own house. It's, I mean, that's fascinating. What made you want to build a house? Well, it was ages ago. We were. Do you know what it was? We were. Um, do you remember we were all doing Wexford, and we were. I, I, you were probably already in Ireland at that stage, and we were driving up and down the N11, um, and it was so beautiful in October during the Wexford Opera Festival, you know, and. Um, but I so loved the Glen of the Downs there. And then I heard that they were going to widen the road and people were very pleased because it would cut their journey time. But I was kind of thinking, oh, there's beautiful trees though. They're going to chop them down. And there were people who I now know, there's some of my neighbors, but in, in, you know, at that time I didn't know any of them, were, were actually um, kind of camping in the trees. They were up in the trees oh. and uh, yeah, protesting with chopping down. And I, um, mm. You know, I didn't think they could ever win. I didn't see myself as an activist, didn't think we had any power. And, um, but they then, yeah, and they didn't win. They, um, <clears throat> they, they were removed. Um, and the, and then, and then we were driving through the, the Glen of the Downs again, and I was going, oh, it looks okay. And then I noticed that it, there was only one line of trees beside the road. And then in behind, there was a big bulldozer sitting in the sunlight. And it was like, and, and it hurt my heart so much that I thought, okay, well, it's not good enough to just tacitly not, not, not approve this. I have to do something different. So we started looking for a place where we could build a house. So tell me a bit more about Clark Jordan, because I, I don't really know a lot about it. Um, when you say eco village, I mean, what does that mean? No. So an eco village for us is just um, a community of people who are trying to build community 
while living um, sustainably in, in harmony with nature and the land. On a practical level, I mean, how, how does that work? Yeah. Well, it means that we have a community farm here. Um, so it's just, it's part of the land. We've 67 acres between everybody. So um, yeah, there's a lot of us though. Um, and, and so part of it is allotments uh, where anybody can grow their own food. And part of it is um, a farm, community farm, where we all pay the same amount every week uh, or every month. And the, um, you get whatever is coming off the farm. So sometimes there's a massive bounty and other weeks there's like very little. So how many people actually live there? How big is it? I think it's about 150. Okay, um, but and presumably you're spread out a bit, are you? Or, are you or, or is the living area quite condensed? The living area is really condensed, yeah. It's, well, it's, um, <clears throat> I think it's called medium density. So it'd be like a small town. Okay, God, that's fascinating. And I, I suppose you really have to get on with everyone to live somewhere like that, too. Yeah, who do? We don't all get on. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's human nature, isn't it? You're not going to. Yeah. <laughs> no, but actually, there's really good community here. So, like, when we, um, um, you know, when lockdown first happened, so we have all these in, um, uh, email lists. So there's, there's, we, we're attached to a town, um, Clock Jordan Town, um, so there's there's one for the whole town. There's one for the people who are members of the eco village, and um, there's one for the farm, which is all slightly different. And on all the lists, people started putting out emails saying, "So does anybody need anything? You know, is anybody stuck at home and cocooning? And who can I do shopping for? And I can leave it outside your house." And you know, and there's just so much there's so much help around for people. That's lovely. Yeah, I think I think it, that's one of the lovely things that's come out of this, isn't it? It's generally the sense of community. And I, I hope we can keep that as we move forward. It's you know, really important. I mean, moving back to music, I mean, how, how are you sort of seeing the future for yourself as, an, as a musician? Um, gosh, it's a million dollar <laughs> isn't it <laughs> i know yeah it's a tough one but i mean i, I are you are you because there seems to be two camps of sort of you know people that are trying to be positive and say oh no we'll get back it'll be fine and then i suppose I, i'm a bit in the other camp of uh, you know i i can't see at the moment how it happens so i'm just interested in talking to different people and how they see we get back <laughs> well not back yeah. but forward into something new yeah i think that's a really important thing to move forward into something new well I, I love what the um, uh, National Campaign for the Arts has put out just yesterday. I, yeah, I, yeah. I to read it. 13 points and they're brilliant. And the last one, I mean, so they're very good in the, the short term. In the short term, we need more funding, more funding for the Arts Council, more funding, um, an extension for the, of the COVID payment for, for artists and um, performing, performing people and people in the arts world. Um, but yeah, my focus is really on the long term I so want there to be I said I just don't think you can value music according to um or arts in general according to um how much money it it, should, it can't be valued with money you know yeah so I really but I also don't think housing I you know who somebody's right to a house is dependent on how much money they have that's t so awful yeah. you know and then your and then your ability to earn money depends on where you grew up and and chance and um it, it's and and also like meritocracy you know I, i'm not particularly keen on that either i think everybody should have a, a right to a a home everybody the long-term last goal was universal income wasn't it yeah exactly so that's what i i see that as the the bridge to where i want to get to um if we, what i what i want to get to which is um um instead of money as a currency care as a currency um so in other words I care about these people so much that um, although they can't give me anything back, these people have seen that I care about them so much and now they care for me. So whatever it is I need, they're just dying to give me that because they really value what I'm doing for those people. And um, uh, that, there's some of that, it's called, you know, gift economy. There's some of that goes on in Club Jordan. I just would love for us to be able to move totally to everybody being valued and um just being able to give freely, then we could be so creative if we didn't have to compete with each other for, for money and for funds, and we didn't have to compete with each other for jobs, and you could just do the thing you want to do because you didn't have to say, oh, I don't know if I can get the funding for it. If I can get the funding, I'd love to do this, or yeah. if I could afford to, I'd stop doing this polluting thing. So 
and I think universal basic income will get us there, you know, because people are, can't go straight away to not paying their mortgage and not, you know, yeah. not having. And, and how do you think that, that would affect like the arts sector, you know, the, the artists actually pr uh, producing work? How do you think that would um, free them up? Well, in the short term, it has to be paid. You know, we can't because we're, we're going to lose our, our um, if we don't, if we if we jump straight to, well, music should be free and arts should be free, then there won't be the same level uh, because people can't stay in, you know, we're all, we're all human. We all need a home. We all need food. Um, but in the long term, if we can move to a, a place where, you know, we have our basic needs covered automatically and then we're just, um, you know, we don't have to be paid for performing and also like so many of the really good ideas just um because of who they're in competition with when when the applications all come in they don't get funded and they should have been but mm. there wasn't enough money to go around so um yeah it's you you have to be so lucky to to get the funding and it's so much a competition and i'd love if it was all collaboration instead of competition that sounds good to me yeah thanks beth <laughs> I find you inspiring when I, I read a lot of your posts um, about um, the climate and all about life. If I feel like I'm kind of kind of new to, you know, we're trying to rewild our garden and, and do, but, you know, the small things that you can do. But I mean, is, is it something you've always sort of had a, an affinity with, with nature and the environment? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But uh, like an uninformed one. Yeah, I think I was always drawn to it, but I didn't know anything about it. Mm. Um, yeah. So, I mean, did yeah. you, feel, do you feel it was actually moving to Clock Jordan that's given you this um, almost like a platform to take more of a, a role in it? You know, I know you're, you're active with the Extinction Rebellion movement. Um, did that come about sort of because of where you live? I think it did. Yeah, because, um, yeah, so I think, I think we all moved here. Everybody who moved here moved here because they care about the environment and they care about nature um, in different ways. But, um, but yeah, moving to somewhere like this is like a, being in a melting pot, you know, because, you know, so I've, so, so we have a compost toilet and we built by hand out of cob. So anybody who wants to do that, or, and we lived in a yurt for five years while we did it. And then there's, so there's people who can go, oh, well, they did it. So let's find out how they did it. And maybe we can borrow their floor or maybe they, their canvas is still there or whatever. And, you know, um, and then there's other people who are really good at growing food. So when I need to know about growing food, I can go to them and, so yeah, it's like a melting pot. Of so how long have you actually lived there? Oh, since 20, 2008. Okay, so a fair, fair amount of time. So how, how did your kids feel moving somewhere like that? Was there quite a big change for them? I mean, especially living in a yurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They loved the yurt, actually. Um, I think just like, you know, the way, you, well, I don't know if it's the same for you, but for me, like the memories that I love from when I was a kid are when we all did things together, you yeah. know. And, and so you're all together all the time in the earth, you know, um, in one room. <laughs> but they loved it, yeah. And yeah. did they actually physically help build your house? Yeah, like for about um, a week. Out <laughs> 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 of the, the five years. <laughs> yeah. and, and are they sort of following in your footsteps? Are they, are they quite sort of engaged with climate change action they are yeah yeah kira is 20 is in extinction rebellion and she's the coordinator of the art group and and oh, um, yeah and sive is really into it as well and um, kira is trying to gesticulate to me that i have the wrong cup and she wants me to change cups <laughs> yeah, it's really important she has her cup <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, yeah. everyone has their favourite cup. <laughs> <laughs> They're so similar. Well, listen, Deirdre, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for giving me all this time. And it's been fascinating finding out a bit more um, of your work as an eco-warrior, as well as a fantastic yeah. clarinetist. And I really hope we get to play together soon um, in person, in real life. <laughs> you, Beth, me too. And thanks for what you're doing. It's so important and it, it feels really hopeful and I love that you're doing it. Oh, yeah. thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> okay, well, take care. See you Thanks. soon. Bye. Bye.